There are a variety of reasons why one might need to have part of their colon removed. Some of the more common reasons are colon cancer, a large polyp, which is not yet a cancer, but is too large to be removed by colonoscopy, recurrent diverticulitis, that is when there are little outpouchings on the colon which become inflamed and then just don't get better or keep happening over and over again. Those would be reasons to remove part of the colon. Then some less common reasons are a stricture or narrowing of the colon and then a colon that just doesn't work anymore. It doesn't move things through. There are a few other possible reasons, but those are the main reasons. When looking at the colon, the small intestine comes in right here, and then the material moves through the colon all the way around and then comes out. Depending on where the disease is, any part or all of the colon uh, may need to be removed. One common area to need to be removed is the right colon or ascending colon. In this operation, we typically divide the small intestine right here and then divide the colon, usually somewhere about here, and then bring the small intestine up and hook it to the colon right there. That allows what is traveling in the small intestine to then enter the colon and move it on its way out. Another common area to remove is the sigmoid colon. This is the most common area for diverticulitis. And usually we do that by dividing the colon right at the top of the rectum and then somewhere on the left or descending colon and then bringing this part of the colon down here and attaching it to that part of the colon. Less common, there may be a lesion, lesion in the transverse colon, which would require dividing the colon here and here, for example, and then bringing this part to that part. And then finally, in some individuals, we need to remove almost all of the colon down to this area here and all of that gets removed. The alternatives to doing surgery are observation, if it is, which means of course do nothing. If it's a tumor that can grow larger and can lead to obstruction. If it's a polyp it can become a tumor. If it's diverticulitis that can get worse or cause a perforation. Endoscopic removal that can be done with most polyps but with the large polyps you might not get it all out or you might make a hole in the colon while doing that. Treating with antibiotics if it's diverticulitis that's usually the first line of treatment anyway and sometimes that just uh, isn't enough or a hole can happen in the colon or you can develop an abscess um, if it's a stricture, you can try to dilate that with a balloon, but sometimes that can rupture the colon. And then medical therapy, particularly for uh, colonic inertia and severe constipation, is the frontline therapy um, for treating that. The different approaches uh, to taking out the colon are open, which means a large incision, usually down the middle of the abdomen laparoscopic or robotic, and those approaches involve several small incisions uh, to help uh, then take the colon out. Um, sometimes with the laparoscopic approach, about a seven to eight centimeter incision is made um, and a hand is placed into the abdomen to help manipulate the tissues and help with the dissection, and that's called a hand-assisted laparoscopic approach. They all have their advantages and disadvantages, and your surgeon will tell you which approach they recommend based on what disease process you have. 
every operation carries some risks. The general risks are blood clots, pneumonia, heart attack, stroke, bleeding, infection. Some of the specific risks that we worry about are an anastomotic leak. What that means is wherever we hook the colon to itself, or in other words, if this part is coming down to this part, that's called an anastomosis. Anywhere we hook the colon to itself, it can leak. If that were to happen, we usually have to return to the operating room, and usually in that situation, you'll end up with a bag to allow the intestinal contents to come out while that area is healing. A colostomy is one name for a, a bag, and it's when the colon comes out into the bag. It's pretty uncommon for that to happen at the first operation, but sometimes there are reasons for which that needs to be done. For example, if somebody has a tumor that's very low in the rectum, then that connection or anastomosis is also going to be very low. And we know that those anastomoses have a much higher risk of leaking. And so usually we will take the small intestine and bring it out in a bag called an ileostomy so that all the intestinal contents come out into the bag and this part of the colon is left empty for several weeks to months while that heals and then often those bags can be reversed. Another risk is injury to the ureter, which is the tube which goes from the kidney, which sits about here and goes down to the bladder, or on this side and down to the bladder. So particularly with severe diverticulitis in this area, it can be hard to find that ureter, and so there's a risk of that being injured. And there's also risk of injury to the other organs that are in there. Anytime you have surgery on the abdomen, it can create adhesions or scar tissue, and that can lead to bowel obstructions down the road. And then any incision can develop a hernia that is much more common in the larger incision. So the larger the incision, the more likely to get a hernia in that incision. So that's one of the reasons why if we can do these operations through a minimally invasive approach, we try to do that. You can expect to be hospitalized for about three to eight days while we're waiting for your intestines to wake up and start working. We found that with the robotic approach, often we can reduce that to one to two days. Bowel movements will likely be different after surgery. The primary purpose of the colon is to remove water from the stool, and that's what gives the stool its firmness. If you are missing a segment of the colon, then not as much water gets pulled out, and so the stool tends to be looser. And so bowel movements may be more loose and more frequent uh, after having part of the colon removed. Obviously, the more colon you remove, the more likely that is to happen. And then we usually recommend no heavy lifting for four to six weeks afterwards so that there's not a lot of strain on the larger incisions trying to decrease the risk of developing a hernia. So those are the different reasons why we would remove part of the colon and how it would be done. In the cancer operations, we make sure that we include these lymph nodes so those can be analyzed to see if there has been any spread of the tumor into the lymph nodes. If you have any additional questions about this, please ask your surgeon.